All right. Okay, what's going on? My name is Anthony Vitali, and today I'm uh, sitting here with the boys from Turnstile. This is Danny, and this is Brendan. And first of all, thanks, guys, a lot for uh, taking the interview. Thanks for uh, letting me have you. All right, I'm going to go right for it. The, uh, the record is called Nonstop Feeling, and it's exactly that. Um, but you look at the cover, and then you put it in, and you listen to it, and right away you get these, like, 1990s type vibes from it. Super colorful, bouncy, and um, like I said, just kind of like this cool 90s vibe to it. And I think it's kind of a big part of the attention that this band is getting. It's unlike anything you've ever put out. And um, how do you how do you feel about the record? And it, it, did you incorporate anything 1990s to to be that way? Um, I wouldn't say we ever intentionally went out of the way to focus on a time period that's that's 20 years ago. Right. But uh, I think that there's things to draw from that time period that are exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, you know, like the, the record is kind of just about human expression at its, at its like, uh, in this most plain and raw form. And uh, I think like with all the colors and like the black and white pictures and with all the colors, um, we just felt that it like kind of really went with like the idea of the record and the idea of all the songs and how, uh, I don't know. It, it's definitely, it, it's not, you know, like, the co color, being being colorful isn't, like, just, you know, 1990s. I, I think, uh, I think I think the the idea behind that was just to go more with the, the scheme of the record and, and, like, what it was all about to me and to the band and everything, so. So more of a personality than a time period. Would you agree? Would you say that it's not so much about trying to recreate or... Um, have a 1990s influence or vibe into it like it's just more about non-stop feeling yeah absolutely not trying to like recreate or reimagine anything mm -hmm. just I mean it kind of like speaks for itself it's just mm -hmm. expression that's what we like cool so and how do you feel about out. the comparisons people are saying that you sound sort of like Snapcase. people are saying that there's some rage against the machine type flavors in there again do you do you sit there and have that idea of trying to incorporate it are you okay with people saying things like this yeah i mean people people say all kinds of things um but obviously there's like all kinds of influences you know like there's influences from all kinds of different kinds of music and whatever and um i think uh and you know whatever whatever someone says a, a band sounds like is is their like their frame of reference you know right. so like um I love Rage Against the Machine, uh, so like for that to be like in someone's frame of reference is like what what the record sounds like. I think it's cool, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do you have a favorite song off the record? I like Blue by You. I can't say why. Maybe because it's like different from other songs, but I just like it a lot. Brendan. Um. Maybe Gravity. So it opens up pretty strong That's with gravity. gravity. Yeah, I don't know if that's like everyone's favorite. I think it's my favorite. Like, uh, I don't know, like musically and lyrically, just like, uh, just like what it kind of like what it's what it captures and stuff for me personally. And um, I like that song a lot. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to pick like exactly one, but which I guess is a good thing, you know. Right. But, um, it's definitely exciting to play like new songs live and stuff too. You know, it's like. Right. And as you get further down the record, you get to Blue by You, and then it kind of, you know, adds to the colorfulness and different flavors that are that are putting out, you know, mm -hmm. that are just, that you're, these new energies that you're putting out with this new record. Really cool. Yeah. You guys are referred to as the Turnstile Tribe. Where did that come from? Uh, People even call you the Tribe, yeah. or, you know, like you're the, the Turnstile Tribe, and this kind of, again goes along with you know the colors and how kind of like there's this kind of cool funky vibe to the band but what's the what's the root of turnstile tribe and where'd it come from i think uh i think when we just started we were like i don't know honestly i don't i can't i can't put like a finger on like an exact moment other than just like maybe when we just like did a the john when the we, we did a design for it, like a turnstile tribe design I think it was initially like supposed to be just like for the band members, and then right. we kind of just like oh, yeah. 
just like made it more like just like for whatever and mm -hmm. it's kind of just like a cool thing that stuck you know yeah. it's like yeah um, I like it more than like crew or like any <laughs> other like you know yeah. right. name you attach like a right. hardcore like identity or whatever the turnstile tribe kind of gives feels you like it fits, you know it feels feels low pressure crew is like kind of high high pressure you know yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, that's like, not the direction you're you're going with this no nah, all right just chill okay um franz isn't here but i was going to ask what um the point or not the point or what the motive is behind hanging the ralph Lauren uh beach towel up on uh for his live setup it's his luck charm it's good luck charm yeah. oh it is mm -hmm. okay cool yeah so he can't he can't uh can't go on without it. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a person like this. His thing. Yeah, yeah. he has and some, like charms and like talismans. Like he has like a little toothpick and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. He has. He has, he has a little, good luck. All so time. it goes to like it kind of goes with his like repertoire too. Like he kind of has this this cool way about him, and that kind of is the good luck charm. And he has to have it up there while he while he plays. You guys cool with that? You're into the, the whole yeah. Tell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't know if I own any Ralph Lauren. I might have like a jacket that I I found a Ralph Lauren jacket in the parking lot one time. <laughs> Still got um, it? I still got it. Cool. It was after a show somewhere like four years ago. But other than that, that's the only Ralph Lauren I have. Did any Ralph Lauren? Yeah. No Ralph Lauren. I'm trying to think if I have. Oh, I used to have a monkey that was like my best friend and drum tech. Nice. It was like my good luck thing. Nice. You know? He was chilled next to the drum set. Um, But something dark happened yeah. to him. I don't really want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He's not with us anymore. It's cool. Next but. question. Um, okay, you guys are from the Baltimore, D.C. area. You guys have a lot of pride in that. Um, you guys were recently in the Washington Post. Yeah, that was crazy. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, like, you know, the local band kind of doing big things, gets recognized by the local newspaper. In the article, there's a photo of you guys, and underneath it, it says Turnstile, and you're labeled as Gonzo Punk Funk. When you read that for the first time, what, what were you thinking? I don't know. The first time I ever heard like the term punk funk or funk punk was like a few weeks before that in France. I, w I was with another band touring in France and this dude comes out who was like next to the venue and saw me like doing push-ups and like some hardcore shirt and he just ran up and asked if I was into funk punk. And I was like, I don't know what that is. He was like, like uh, infectious grooves. And I was like, Okay, I know what that is. Yeah. So you like like suicidal tendencies? He's like, what's that? <laughs> so, funk punk is something special. I know that, and I don't know if we can relate to it, but I feel what's, good what's, about um, it. Yeah. See, like I said, everything is some is it's every anything that says something it sounds like whatever. Yeah. It's, it's their frame of reference. So like I don't even I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like I read, I was like, all right, that's cool. I don't know what that means. But. What's Gonzo mean though? That's the thing. Like punk funk, is is this. You know this division of the music, but what is Gonzo punk funk? That was the. That was what kind of like you know, and I, that's what made me want to ask it is you know are you guys kind of cool with like the whole people having their own perspective and saying yeah, yeah turnstile local band turnstile Gonzo punk funk. That's actually a good point because like the majority of stuff like I see about the record is coming from the perspective of someone who's into hardcore or into punk, and so of course they're gonna use like. Their frame of reference and like draw from like, oh, uh, it sounds like Inside Out or Raging Against right, right, or something right. like that. But then, this dude from the Washington Post, I presume, is not like a hardcore kid. Right, right. Like he's a Washington Post. So he's columnist. gonna have to judge it for himself. Yeah. So he has like obviously a much different uh, perspective. So it's interesting to see what people outside of hardcore say and what terminology they use. Pretty cool. So not not offended by it or anything, right? Just no, punk, no, Gonzo whatever. Punk Funk. Yeah. All right. Um, you guys all have really cool nicknames. B Smooth, D Fang, Freaky Franz, Shady Brady. <laughs> Where did these all come from? Uh, well, D Fang's my name, Daniel Fang. So all right, pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty basic. And B Smooth. B Smooth it was when I made a Twitter, I think like, in like 2008. That was just like, I was, I was the name I made it, and obviously like, that kind of becomes a nickname for people that like, you know, like, kind of know you or something like that right. so like my friend just started calling me I don't know it's like yeah cool but uh, kind of cool going with the colorful theme too it kind of like it carries yeah, over yeah, I don't know I remember uh, Freaky Franz that's just like I don't know I feel like I've just always known him as Freaky Franz 
Like that's just that was just like a, a, a natural forming name. That's just like how his name's is form. Is his name Frank though, or is it's it, Franz? It's Franz. His name is Franz. Wow. All right. Yeah. Um, I call him Frank sometimes as a joke, but his name is actually Franz. Franz Franklin. That's his. That's his middle name. Shady Sweet. Brady. It's just like yeah. It's just like <laughs> if you look at him, you know, you know where that came from. Hmm. Nothing for Sean though, or anything. Uh, Sean Koo. Is like Sean that, that's like the name we like grew up calling him. His, his last name is Colin, but we just. I don't know why, you know, just... Cool, all good, yeah. good vibes. All right, um, a lot of positive reviews for the record. A lot of, you know, good energy coming your way, a lot of uh, attention. The band is, you know, you can hear the progression, the band has escalated to it. But you can't help sometimes, you know, before I took this interview with you guys, look through the YouTube comments and see what people have to say. Probably not the best thing to do sometimes, <laughs> but you come across the negative stuff too. And what do you have to say about people that are saying that you're straying away from where you're you're coming from, you know, straying away from your roots and you're not turnstile anymore? And and just, you know, with with everything, you know, there's going to be a negative opinion. But what do you have to say in regards to somebody that, that thinks that you've abandoned them or hardcore or anything? Like that? <laughs> hey, I think that's cool. I think that's a positive thing to hear that. Although it might be, like, overtly negative if someone's, like, trying to bash you yeah. or something if they're saying that you're doing something new and different that in itself is a compliment for sure so people are just you think they're just having a hard time digesting what's going on here that's definitely possible i think i don't like you know nothing that's what, what i what i said a couple nights on the store is like nothing's for everyone you know what i mean and that's like what's cool about hardcore music is that like if you you know, you might, like, there's two hardcore bands that are playing the same show. You might love one and hate the other, like, how it sounds musically. Right. But, you know, like, you support what you think is something positive in in hardcore. You, you support what you think is, like, a band that, whether you like them musically or not, like, I, I support bands that I think are doing something really cool mm -hmm. or, you know, like, exciting or what they want to do, you know? Like, like, a band shouldn't do, like, do a band just to please other people, you know? Like, that's, like... That's just like kind of missing the point, you know. Right. So. So there is no one sound. There is no like this is what hardcore sounds like. No way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, with that, the next run that you guys are going out on, I believe, is with Newfound Glory, which is really cool. Different platform for you. Different style. You sang on the new record, which is really cool, kind of crossing over into different, different genres and stuff like that. And with you guys getting bigger, if something like the warp tour or something else something more out of your element were to come along what would you do in the event you were asked to play something like that and to play with bands that maybe you don't fit in with and maybe could reach out to different people well, I, th I think the new fun glory tour is like an example of that in, in itself like that's like we've never done anything at that level really and we're excited about it you know yeah. it's like Chad Chad has been a good friend of mine for a long time and, and he asked us to do it um, and we were all just excited, you know, because I, I, I think, uh, hardcore kids like Newfound Glory, you know, like they, mm -hmm. they, there's definitely a similar audience and, but there's also a very different audience as you know, and I think like playing to, playing that kind of like mixed stuff is like cool because, uh, you know, kids will cut, kids will come out to see like one of the other bands that have never even heard of like us or whoever you know what I mean and then right. just, and then see a band and get excited about it you know and like that's what I used to like when I used to go to you know when I was young yeah, for the first time and it, like they would never see otherwise you know except for that show mm -hmm. it's like it's exciting you know and you, can, you right. can find something you like and like so you'd be willing to cross the line and take it to another level if, if you know that it called for it yeah like the idea of like playing in front of people who wouldn't normally uh, go to see like that kind of band like if Relay was like a hardcore band we right. go to hardcore shows it's cool to like um, I guess expose someone to that but also like more importantly it's more it's like really really nice to be able to tour with bands that we just like like I love Newfound Glory I'm happy we can tour with them um, I love a lot, a lot of bands that aren't hardcore mm -hmm. I love to tour with them so it's I feel like it's a privilege to like be able to do that Awesome. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's definitely exciting. Like, well, we've we've all, we've only really done things that we felt were like exciting. You know what I mean? Like, 
this tour is exciting, that Newfound Glory tour will be exciting. It's like, you know, we wouldn't like, I think, I think there's an amount of like, like you wouldn't want, like obviously like some bands do like, you know, a, a crossover tour as in like an investment when they actually like hate their lives on the tour, you know what I mean? Because they're just like touring with some band that they just like hate or something. So we wouldn't, I don't think we'd ever do anything like that, but it's like, this, is, this isn't like that at all, you know, we're super excited. I think that tour is going to be really cool. I think so too. Yeah. All right. Um, you're getting overwhelming support from different uh, people across the uh, the musical spectrum. Like I said, kind of elaborating on the whole touring with Newfound Glory and stuff like that. Parker Cannon from the story so far has let people know that he definitely supports Turnstile. Um, speaking of Chad, his fiance Haley Williams from Paramore, a tremendous band who has, I've seen recently, tweeted that she was listening to New Turnstile and new Taylor Swift, and those were like the two new records that she was bumping. And like, you know, she she let millions of people know that she likes you guys. How do you feel about that, and do you support those guys back? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We love Paramore. We listen to Paramore all the time. Ain't it fun? Yeah, hell yeah. It's like, that's like the number one single. In that's like band. the soundtrack to Turnstile. We just mm. play that like yeah, yeah. every day. And the story so far cool too, or are you, are you yeah, into them? Of course. Yeah, of Nice. Love of them. They're, they're, they're really cool. Like. Uh, known just known them for a while, like I guess just do playing shows and stuff like that or whatever. But yeah, they're they're rad dudes. Parker's cool. Um, yeah, I was just exciting, to, especially like you know seeing. It's crazy, like when when like if like Haley like tweeted something like that. It's like there's all these people that are like, then we get like a hundred tweets after that that are just like, either like, oh this is my new favorite band or like. Haley, I love you so much. Like, not even, like, talking about the band. Just, like, please follow me. Yeah. But, yeah, it's cool. But cool, between, you know, the story so far, Paramore, Taylor Swift, all these people just showing love to each other. Just kind of kind of cool. All right. Um, recently, um, Justice Trip did an interview with Alternative Press addressing Trapped Under Ice and about how there's this imminent comeback of this band. And I'm sure you get bothered with it all the time about when Trapped Under Ice is going to make a return. You know, Turnstile is widely successful. Angel Dust is widely successful. These two bands have branched off and have started to do their own thing. But I have uh, a quote here from Justice with Alternative Press. He said, I love doing Trapped Under Ice, but that record, Nonstop Feeling, is too good not for them to see its full potential and shove it down everyone's throat. So people are asking Justice, when's Trapped Under Ice coming back? And he's saying, let Turnstile and that record like do its thing. How do you feel about that? Like that that justice and you know, your boy from Trapped Under Ice and where you guys kind of started out together is saying let Turnstile do their thing. That record is too good. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, we all like Trapped Under Ice. Like we we jammed we jammed like a couple weeks ago and we were like we were already like writing new stuff or whatever. But uh, I, I wouldn't say there's a rush to like make it like full time again. But we're definitely like planning on doing something. But like, um, like. Everyone's got like something going on, you know. We wouldn't want to like put put the brakes on anything. Right. Uh, as of right now, like Angel Dust is about to record a new record. Um, we just put out this record. We have like stuff planned pretty much to like August now, like touring right. and stuff. And Diamond Youth is about to put out a new record. Mm -hmm. And um, there's yeah. So like mm. we're gonna we're definitely gonna do something, but yeah. Danny, how do you feel about being involved in both ends of the the Angel Dust and Turnstile movement? Movement? Oh, I love it. I mean, uh, of course, like I love Turnstile and Angel Dust and being able to like uh, record music with two people, like Brennan, who's an amazing songwriter, and Justice, who's an amazing songwriter. And uh, I love Trapped Under Ice, and so like being in the middle of it is just privilege yeah because like my best friends and I love it all I mean I love nice. Diamond Youth too I for played sure. that for a little bit with Brendan and uh, I have nothing but like respect and admiration for like everyone involved in all those bands mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that Justice also like has like a genuine love for all the bands too and mm -hmm. doesn't want like you know any band to like curtail this or that um, for another band to do more um, so yeah, there's no like weird tension going on. It's like we like we're all like best friends, and we all just like do whatever we want and help e like help each other create stuff. Like Justice helps writing, like you know, like I'll, I'll throw ideas off him, he'll throw ideas off me, mm -hmm. and like 
same with like Sam and like everyone like we got, it's all just like a big group of friends and just have a few bands and we just like do it so you guys are super busy you yourself just going back and forth with all of this but you still have like this this love for it all right regardless of how busy and how crazy things are getting yeah all right um another question though is angel dust is doing great turnstile is doing great how do you feel about these two bands that have branched off of trapped under ice have almost pretty much made tui take a back seat to it how do you feel about that do you feel that the trapped under ice is kind of you know can Trapped Under Ice wait? Like, are you guys okay with both of these bands being successful, branching off of TUI? Yeah, I, I mean, Angel Dust is like my favorite band in the world. Like, I love Angel Dust. I love everyone in the band. I love the music, and it's like really exciting. Trapped Under Ice will always have a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, the, there's there's no like, n no need to like pick one over the other, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's, there's they're definitely separate entities. Uh, so you like singing and you like being behind the drums then, right? Oh, yeah, it's kind of yeah. two different two different worlds. Yeah, I'm, I definitely miss playing drums. I don't even know how to hold the sticks anymore. <laughs> it's cool to uh, see you up there, though. You're kind of like more loose up on stage when you're singing. You don't have to really be behind the kit. You yeah, get it's to, fun, yeah. You get to have a good time. All right, um, what's next? After the newfound glory run, do you, keep, do you keep this vibe? Do you keep progressing the sound? Do you keep going into uncharted territory? What's next for Turnstile? Whatever comes out. Um, I mean, we all grow up. And it might not all... make it out of this parking lot. Yeah, that's true. So, hope so. This like, could be the last show. Yeah. You never know. This is it. All right. But, uh, like, as touring wise, we have like a couple more. We're going to Europe and like doing uh, doing some stuff in the summer. Like, we pretty much have stuff until August, and then we'll probably keep doing stuff. But yeah. Just keep doing the same thing. Um, it's exciting, you know. Cool. Being with our being with our friends in the van and just like touring and making music, it's like it's an exciting thing. So that's all. The record is called Nonstop Feeling. This is B Smooth. Thank you. This is D Fang. These guys are Turnstile guys. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Man.